Welcome to the Makeup and Beauty Podcast, where we talk about all things makeup and beauty with a dash of fashion and pop culture. I'm your host, C. Michelle, and let's jump right into it. Welcome back to the Makeup and Beauty Podcast. I hope you had a great three-day weekend. I hope you had a chance to sit back and reflect on Dr. Martin Luther King. I hope you had an extra day to rest and recharge. You guys, you are in for a treat for today's episode. We are talking all things sunscreen. I have a great new product of the week that I'm excited to share. A ton is going on in beauty news. We have a lot to cover. But first, before we dig into the show, I want to talk to you about our guest. Her name is Danielle Gray, AKA the Style and Beauty Doctor. She is a beauty expert and lifestyle blogger based in New York City. She focuses on black skincare, and I see her as an expert on sunscreen for melanin women. She's going to give us all the information on why it is important to wear sunscreen and more. I'm so excited for you guys to hear this episode. So let's go ahead and get started with some beauty news. So I don't know about you, but I like to know when a brand is acquired, you take that information and do what you will with it. But Tula was just acquired by PNG. PNG is on a roll. They just purchased pharmacy and now Tula. Tula is a probiotic skincare line and it's one of the lines that I've always wanted to try. So I'm curious if you guys have tried Tula, let me know by sliding over in my DMs at Michelle Styles over on Instagram or send the podcast an email at podcast at cmichellestyles.com. The information will be listed below in the show notes. Some other things that are going on in fashion, Balenciaga and Ye, aka Kanye West, is collaborating with Gap. So the three of them are coming together to come up with a collection that possibly real people can afford. The last few collaborations that I've mentioned are things that are just beyond my price point at this point. So I'm looking forward to this one to see what they come out with. There is no launch date as of yet, but I will keep you guys posted. Another collaboration that was just announced is the Barbie Times Bauman collection. They have a full capsule collection. It's a 21 piece collection, all of which are things that are not in my price point at the moment. But you know what we're claiming in his name and the name of Jesus that one day, yes, I will be able to afford one of these couture collaborations, child, because they need they're missing out on me. Yep. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. So Saks has an advent box and I randomly found it and it was on sale for $37.50, originally $75. One of the products in there was, it's by Sunday Riley and it's the CEO Glow Vitamin C and Turmeric Face Oil. You guys, this stuff, is so good. So here's the description. CEO Glow is a vitamin C and turmeric glow giving face oil that recharges the radiance of your skin. Infused with advanced vitamin C and golden turmeric for instant vibrance and antioxidant defense. CEO Glow delivers cold press nutrient rich extracts into your skin, leaving your complexion looking brighter and nurtured. It's cool. It's cruelty free, sulfate free, paraben free, gluten free, soy free, phthalate free, fragrance free, and it's vegan. Child, is there anything left? Now, if there is, it's unbenux to me. So this face oil is wonderful. So you just massage two to three drops into your face and neck and decollete morning and night. I use it once a day. So I don't really get too deep into ingredients and things like that on the podcast because that can take up probably an hour going through it. But it has some really great things in there like evening primrose oil, pomegranate seed oil, golden turmeric, jojoba oil, and lots of other things. Ginger, which is definitely a major anti-inflammatory agent. So my skin looked vibrant, just luminous after I used it. And I noticed the vibrance after one day of use. Products that give me instant results, I love. It definitely gave me a great pick-me-up. I love it. I love it and I'm going to stick beside it. I rub whatever's left into my hands and I just gently 
massage it into my skin as the last step of my skincare. And you guys, she's glowing. She's radiant. So check out that oil. It starts at $40 for the small size and can go up to, I believe, $80. When I'm done with the one that came in the advent calendar, it's enough for probably six to eight weeks, seeing that you only need a couple drops. The link to it will be below in the show notes. It is time to start the show now. Right after this song, you are going to hear Daniel Gray and I talking about sunscreen, its importance, its now major resurgence in the black community. Why is this happening now? Just all of these things we're getting into in this conversation. She is such a delight and so fun to talk to. And she is definitely going to give us some major information in our chat. Hey, Danielle, and welcome to the Makeup and Beauty Podcast. We are so happy to have you on today. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. So tell me about yourself and tell me how you got into the skincare world or just blogging in general. Okay, so a long time ago, way, way back, (laughs) 2007, I uh, <laughs> I was a new I was a fairly new college graduate. I graduated from college in 2003, got a degree in marketing. And then as we were lining up to, you know, graduate, I overheard two girls talking about they were going to go to the Fashion Institute of Technology here in New York City. And I was like, "Oh, yeah, me too." In my head, right? Like ear dropping, ear hustling on that conversation. <laughs> And so I did, I went and I took, um, at first I took a course in fashion styling because I thought that's what I wanted to do. But then when I realized like all the ins and outs of fashion styling, I was like, oh, that's a lot. That's not not what I want to do. I like, I want to style people, but I don't want to be responsible bringing clothes to the set and receipts and all this other stuff. So I wound up getting an image consulting certificate from um, FIT, which is similar-ish to fashion styling in the terms of you're styling someone, but it's like someone, it's like more personal than it is like with uh, fashion styling. So did that after I was done with that in 2006, I said, you know what? I should start a blog, started it in 2007. Uh, It started as something where it was to kind of market myself to people and get me new clients. But after a while, I was like, wait, if I tweak this, I can, you know, reach more people without ever having to leave my house. I'm like, I need to hack this. Okay. (laughs) So, so um, long story short, over the years, this blog has taken me to so many places um, on television. Um, It's been a, you know, a very uh, rewarding experience in terms of just like, People I get to meet, like my cousins from okay. Detroit. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, I ain't gonna lie, the money's good too. Amen. <laughs> but um, a couple of years ago, I decided to niche down to skincare. I'd always talked about skincare, but um, I realized that, especially with starting a YouTube channel, which I did later on after having a blog, that if I have too many topics, like my views are gonna be all over the place. Mm. So I was like, you know, let me niche down to skincare. And, you know, I felt like, you know, that's a way that I can stand out because everyone else was already doing things like makeup and fashion and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, let me do skincare. And I love that because it gives me an opportunity to, to teach people who, because unfortunately for us, you know, some of us don't grow up learning that, you know, we need sunscreen, that we need a skincare routine. We believe that um, black doesn't crack, which in yes. many ways it doesn't. It doesn't crack, but that don't mean that we can't take care of it and you know make it its best. So that's where I come in on the internet. <laughs> that part, that yes. part, that's huge. And I see you as that skincare sunscreen expert because you've taught me quite a bit on sunscreen, and I just thought it would be so important to share this information with my listeners that are primarily black women. Yes. And to your point, that exact sentiment, black don't crack, we don't need it, the melanin in our skin, you know, protects us from sun and all that, right? Is that technically? Yes. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. but we still need that extra barrier. Like, it's still important to take care of your skin. And I think during the panorama, you know, we have had (laughs) to really focus and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, let me let me, okay, I, sh- I probably should be focusing on this skincare regimen a little bit right. more. Like I'm seeing a little Nick here, I'm seeing a little Nick there. Like what can I do to improve that? 
And I know one of your rules of thumb that we'll get into later is if you have hyperpigmentation and you're not wearing sunscreen, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're playing yourself. It's like, <laughs> what's going on? Like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> so how did you really get into sunscreen and choosing that particularly to focus so, on? The funny thing is I've been talking about sunscreen on the internet before it was popular. Mm -hmm. Like I, I used to, girl, I used to get bullied really? on the internet <laughs> for talking about sunscreen. Really? I remember, I remember there was one video that I did where essentially the title was like, um, you know, you one number one beauty must have and yes, black people need it. Mm -hmm. And it was like this maybe four minute long video about sunscreen. Initially, <clears throat> It was received well from my immediate audience. And this is something that happens often on YouTube because when you publish something, first it goes to the people who are subscribed to you, who, who like you and are, who are normally into the things that you, that you, that you uh, post videos on. But then it gets like a second and third and fourth and you know what going and so forth wins where other audience see it. I don't know what Hotep board shared my, my, oh. my, my video, but for like, a year or two straight, like randomly every other month, there would be a comment on there. One person said, why is this bed wench giving us, right, bed Ooh. wench, why is this bed wench giving us solutions to white people's problems? Somebody said, somebody needs to shoot this B. I don't know oh. if I can curse on your thing, I'm keeping PG-13. And I was just like, the violence over sunscreen? Over which sunscreen. is funny to me, right, which is funny to me because um, it's done a complete 180 now where it's like I'm being praised for the sunscreen because now I think more of us are figuring out that like, again, if you have hyperpigmentation, which uh, unfortunately a lot of us go through just because of the nature of, of melanin, you're going to need some sunscreen. Even if you don't have hyperpigmentation as an issue at the moment, you still want to protect yourself from the sun because that sun will it's responsible for about 89% for about of the visible signs of premature aging, mm -hmm. AKA yo black can crack. <laughs> and the funny, yo, the funny thing is I was on some post that somebody, somebody had tagged me and one of my followers <laughs> and it was somebody in the comments talking about, yeah, I don't need that synthetic crap, that sunscreen, this, that, and the third. So I was like, let me click on this person's profile, girl. Oh gosh. I clicked on this profile. I was like, sis. Come on now. You could benefit the, from this. The, 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 you can benefit from this because the texture was texturing Ooh. and the skin was like, like the part that like you could look and see the sun damage on the person's skin. So it's just like, I don't know why folks just have a hard time with it, but because it's just like. I, it's ingrained in us technically, right? Right. I, like we grow up with it. I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up seeing my family members wear sunscreen. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it was never like a, a thing. I mean, moisturizers, yes. Other skincare things, yes. But it was never like sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. It just became a relevant thing to me in my adult years, especially when I moved out to California. It was like, ooh, mm -hmm. I need something like this sun is blazing. You know, like it's, right. it's, it's a little different out there. So it just became a thing for me. So, and I think for the millennial generation, it's we are kind of changing that trajectory a little bit. Like we're kind mm -hmm. of, I don't want to say the pioneers, but we're starting to really change the narrative on how it looks on us as far as black right. women. I think Gen Zers are all into skincare and all of that right now. They yeah, are they like, come out the womb talking about what's my three steps. <laughs> I mean, okay. And then you have brands like Chanel creating stuff for them, like their mm -hmm. number one line. You You have all these brands that are like, focusing on that generation specifically but anyway skincare and sunscreen is like new to us because most black people wake up put water on their face and just keep it moving right you right. know what I mean like having a routine and a process is for I'll say for me and mine is new you know what I mean like mm -hmm. having a regimen sticking to that regimen taking care like that's new so when it comes to sunscreen what are some of the do's and don'ts well, the uh, number one don't will be don't not wear it. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm going to need you to do wear it. <laughs> right. So I think, um, and I do a lot of reviews on uh, mineral sunscreens for darker skin, um, mm -hmm. mainly because 
there <laughs> we know how to, those mineral sunscreens can Ashy. look and yeah. right and mostly for education because i don't think the average person realizes that there is a difference between mineral and chemical sunscreen so there's a lot of like teaching that goes there mm. but i i feel like um there's so many different subsets of people when it comes to sunscreen like um on my channel there's a subset of people who are like really really into it they want to know you know, what's the UVA factor on it. Mm. Um, you know, they want SPF 50 plus, they want to, you know, they, they're like into it. Um, and then the average person does may not care as much because they don't know the, the nuances when it comes to sunscreen. Um, but I would say that like, try to find, first of all, you, a sun, finding a good sunscreen may not be as easy as, you know, finding a cleanser for some people, That's true. right? Because for me, I'll use any sunscreen that works for oily skin, right? Okay. As long as that mess is not having me looking greasy mm -hmm. in the summertime, um, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to go for it. And then I'll need something a little bit more heavier, a little bit more heavier, a little heavier <laughs> in the winter time. Because right now outside, I think it's like 22 degrees or 29 mm -hmm. degrees or something here in New York, and you know, woo. We anyway, we're just cold out here. But let me ask cold. you this, though. Okay, so for someone that's totally new to sunscreen, where mm -hmm. should they start? I, I think what they should start doing is they they would have to make an assessment before you even step in a store to to look at products or anything like that. You have to make an assessment of your what's already in your skincare routine and what your lifestyle is, right? So I would say that like with the assessment of your skincare, your skincare routine and your skin is, okay, is my skin oily? Is it dry? Is it more on the sensitive side? Are there certain ingredients that I try to avoid? Um, am I acne prone? Like these are things that you, you know, you kind of keep in mind. Lifestyle wise, um, are you somebody who wears makeup? Are you somebody who works out a lot? Because these are things that are going to affect the sunscreen that you use. So I like to wear makeup, but I also like to work. Well, I don't like to work out. No, no, child. Who but I, I do. Well, there's, you know, I, know. I do. I still do it regularly, right? So the sunscreen that I wear to work out is likely going to be different than the sunscreen that I would wear underneath makeup. Ooh, it's levels. Sunscreen, right, because the sunscreen I'm going to wear to work out, I want it to be water resistant so that like when I sweat, I'm not having sunscreen pouring off of me. Um, when I'm wearing makeup, I want a sunscreen that's not going to make my makeup Oily. look greasy through yeah. right, make my makeup look greasy throughout the day. And then if I'm at the beach, it's a whole different story because I'm gonna want something water resistant, SPF fifty plus. I need something that's small enough for me to carry my beach bag because I'm gonna definitely need to be reapplying if I'm mm -hmm. at the beach. So these are things that you you know you have to kind of keep into consideration. What I would do before you even go into a store, because even now the drugstores are overwhelming. Even for me, mm -hmm. like if, when I go in a drugstore and I'm like, wow, there's so many products out here, is I would start the search online first. So like, even if you can't, even if you're like Sephora products aren't in your price range, I would still go on the Sephora website only because they have a really great way of categorizing things. So you can categorize by your concern, you can categorize by um, obviously price point, um, what the texture is, like if you want something that's um, a cream or a lotion or a powder, like I find that to be very, very easy. And then you can look at what the options are that come up once you've kind of like filtered these things down. And then maybe there's an option there that you can afford. If not, then whatever catches your eye, see if you can find something at a lower price point that's similar-ish mm -hmm. to you know, what you found. And then you start to go out and buy, you know, the sunscreens and try them out. Now you, you got to try them out because you can't just buy one and be like, all right, this is going to be the one. Not everybody's that lucky. You try things out, I would say, to kind of keep like a little bit of a diary, even if it's something like just writing something on your notes app or on your phone really quickly or taking like a quick little video diary kind of thing so that you can kind of keep track of what worked, what didn't work. But also keep in mind that, like I said before, you may not need, you may need more than one sunscreen because of your lifestyle and the different facets of your lifestyle. I literally just took notes because I'm like, wait a minute. It makes me think about, you have to find your sunscreen like you do everything else. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a new foundation, you have to make sure that the undertone is correct. Same thing mm -hmm. with the sunscreen. You have to make sure it doesn't leave a cast. It's <clears throat> not just a one size fits all product mm -hmm. and that's how I was thinking it was I wasn't yeah. necessarily thinking 
oh, okay, I need something for workout or I need something for this or that. I, I was just thinking I can put on my black girl sunscreen for whatever and keep it moving. So that makes yeah. me actually think a little deeper on sunscreen to know that, okay, I have to have different ones for different things. Like I have different foundations for different things. It's the same right. thing with the sunscreen. Right. Wow. And for some people, some people can get away with just that one sunscreen for, because, you know, some people just want to keep things simple. They mm -hmm. may be able to just have that one sunscreen. But for me, I know like, I'm not going to wear super goop unseen sunscreen to the gym, <laughs> mm. you know, because it's very much like almost like a, a makeup primer kind of feel to it. And that, that type of texture doesn't work for me at the gym, but it works beautifully underneath makeup, you know? So uh, that's, that's yeah. how I look at it. Okay. So my wheels are just turned. <laughs> for you personally, what do you use underneath makeup and what do you use for say going to the gym or everyday use? Yeah, so I I don't I'm not like married to any particular brand when it comes to sunscreen. <laughs> I used to really love one from Olay, but sadly they discontinued it, like mm. play the violin. Oh. Um, but I tend to like in general lightweight sunscreen. So sunscreens that don't feel very heavy because that's usually what works best for my oily skin. And for me, I find that a lot in either Korean or Japanese sunscreens mm -hmm. because they, I feel like they like, they're really great with the innovation and great with making them cosmetically elegant, which basically, you know, fancy way of saying it look good on my skin. <laughs> um, so I like a lot of the Korean and Japanese sunscreens. Um, but I, because of the nature of what I do, I'm always trying something new. So there's always something different in the rotation. Right now for the winter, though, I'm using um, uh, Thank You Farmer is the name of the brand. They have a water, I believe it's called Water Sun Cream. Okay. But it's a, it's a very creamy, rich sunscreen that I like in particular for this cold season. Okay. It'd probably be too. And that's another thing too. Like what's the weather doing where you live that's going to factor into not only your sunscreen, but maybe like your moisturizer and other products in your skincare routine. Mm -hmm. So for me, th this sunscreen is perfect for me now because it's cold, but in the summertime when my oily skin is probably going to, you know, be a little greasy, I'm not even going to say a little, a lot greasier, I'm going to need something that's more lightweight because that's not going to work out for me. Um, so that one so, you use more sleep for like everyday use or going to the gym? Yeah, like okay. everyday use. And, and that one has been working underneath my makeup because it, um, it's cold. <laughs> so gotcha. it's like, you know, like um, when I go to the gym, there's one, I'm trying to think of the name of it. I want to say it's like a Nivea Japan. I think it's Nivea Japan, but it's like this UV essence, SPF 50 plus, it's water resistant. So I like that for the gym. I also like, Kroger <laughs> Listen. The grocery store has yes. a dupe for the super goop unseen sunscreen. It's like 10 bucks. If you catch it on sale, you can get it for even less. Wow. But like, and you get way more product than you would get from the super goop unseen sunscreen. I like that one for underneath makeup. It has like that silicone -y type of feel that um, feels good underneath makeup. For my body, I picked up something oh, from- oh, We have body oh. sunscreen? We got body sunscreen, what? girl. But see, I only think of body sunscreens only in the summer months. I, right. I don't think of them any other time, really. So the thing in the winter time, it really depends, right? So most people, because when I told my said this in a YouTube video, people in the comments were like, Are "You obsessed with sunscreen?" I'm like, <laughs> "No, <laughs> like I just like I gotta put moisturizer on my body anyway. While I'm there, I might as well be put the sunscreen on too, yeah. you know." Yeah. So for me, I work at home. I've usually, now I'm covered up because I just came from the gym. But usually I'm in the house with like little, you know, my arms is out, my legs is out. Mm -hmm. UVA, which is the aging rays, can penetrate windows. So I'm still getting that UV exposure. And every little bit adds up. I already need to put something on my body skin. I might as well just, like to me, it's not like an extra arduous step to do it. Yeah. And usually with body sunscreens, I just get whatever's like the two for five at Walgreens or CVS or whatever's on sale. Not even anything that's super expensive. But yeah, I definitely um, do that even when, in the winter. Yeah. Okay, but it, so that's it, cool. it depends on your lifestyle though, because some people, you know, maybe they, I don't know, 
work in a dungeon somewhere where there's like zero <laughs> zero light and then when they go outside they're like bundled up because some clothing does provide uv protection mm-hmm. uh but for me i'm inside more than i'm outside and i'm still getting that sun exposure from i see the, window. the beautiful sunlight coming in where you are it's, like it's, you have that I'm natural about to light push right now the shades down because i'm like oh this is too much sunlight but you know when <laughs> i said like well we have body sunscreens i'm like okay yeah duh you do but i don't know why it didn't register because it's yeah. not summertime so i'm like yes i know yeah. we have body sunscreens for those that are gonna be like girl you ain't know you had no sunscreens for the body yes but i you know. know something somebody had asked me that same question the other day they was like are there is there so they asked if there's such a thing as sunscreen for the body so i would say no question is what Off people limits. call like a dumb question a dumb question a dumb you know question what? is a question that's unasked hello and yeah. I, thank you. See, that's why you my cousin. Um, I was thinking of it also from the aspect of like it being incorporated in a product like a lotion, not yeah. in, in, in like an everyday product. And I have seen that here recently. Yeah. And that makes it easier for some people too. Like yeah. if it's already in the moisturizer, as long as you put on enough, you're good. Now, let me ask you this. How do mm-hmm. you properly apply the sunscreen? I've been reading about a okay. three finger rule. Is that true? Yes. So it, it it depends. So there's actually uh, an equation to figure out how much sunscreen you need. Y equals and MX plus B. Let me write this down. <laughs> <laughs> right. It might as well be. So you need two milligrams of sunscreen per centimeter square of skin, right? Ooh. Right. So the thing is, who amongst us is going to bust out the measuring tape and measure that, right? I've seen people do it though. I've seen people, skincare influencers, where they actually measure their face to know exactly how much sunscreen they need. And I'm like, wow, more power to you. And for that's some not people, that adds that. up. Right. Okay. For some people, it adds up to um, about two to three finger lengths. Okay. Some people use that as a rule. Some people use a quarter teaspoon. I've seen people use a half a teaspoon. Uh, but <laughs> essentially, it's the two milligrams per centimeter square. Some people have skin conditions where they really have to be adamant about making sure they put on the right amount of sunscreen and that they reapply throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, reapplying throughout the day does kind of help you if your first application, you maybe you missed a spot, and then reapplying throughout the day does kind of help with that. But people who have melasma, people who have conditions like lupus that makes the skin more sensitive to the sun, like these are people who really need to be like on it when it comes to figuring out how much sunscreen they need. When it comes to put, applying it to your face, you know, that amount is for your face, your neck, your ears, behind the ears. Wow. And okay. that's usually, give or take, it's like two to three fingerfuls. It's not a hard science with that because, you know, certain sunscreen formulations, like if it's a, whether it's a cream mm-hmm. or a thick cream, or if it's like something that's really runny, can make it a little bit difficult to kind of do the two to three finger lengths thing. But I feel like if you can do one, like two layers, two thin layers on that you're, you're probably good. For the body, it's estimated to be like a shot glass full, but you know, everybody's body is different. different Our bodies yeah. take up different amounts of space. But reapplying throughout the day, if you feel like, well, you should reapply throughout the day uh, because, you know, people are not applying enough, one. And then two, you know, throughout as you're going throughout your day, there may be some breakdown of the sunscreen. Not, not as if to say you sweat and then it's like, boop, I'm back to zero. <laughs> right. But it can, break da- it can break down throughout the day, like your oil, the sweat, and then water, because, you know, sunscreens are water resistant, not waterproof. Mm-hmm. So reapplying throughout the day does help with that as well. When it comes to reapplying, these sunscreens. Mm -hmm. Now for some people that are wearing makeup, I know that they have mist sunscreens, I guess now. Mm -hmm. Is that recommended? Or for those that have on makeup per se, they can't technically put it on their face. Like how would that work? Would you use a mist or spray? Yeah. So there there are a couple of different options. I've seen people use the, whatever sunscreen they put on underneath, they've used that to reapply over it. So they'll actually take like a beauty sponge or makeup sponge and they'll take their lotion or cream sunscreen and dab it over over their makeup. That doesn't work for me. Like that interferes with my makeup. I ain't with that. Okay. I'm not married to that. But it is an option, right? Right. <laughs> um, another option, like you mentioned, the mist. People have to be careful with the mist because not every sunscreen that comes in a spray should be sprayed directly to your face. Mm. And you'll know because they'll say you'll you'll say it on the ingredients. And not every mist should be sprayed over makeup. 
one in particular, um, Neutrogena has a makeup mist that comes in a spray. It's amazing, but it's like very uh, oily. So when you put that over your makeup to kind of break down your makeup, like that's not gotcha. something you would want to apply over makeup. Right. Um, and but what my what I like to do, what I am married to, is using a mineral powder sunscreen to apply over my makeup. So Peter oh, Thomas Rook oh. used to make one. I don't know what happened. It seems like it's it's discontinued or whatever. Mm. But Super Goop has one. It's called um defense something or another but you know you go into super goop's website or you go into Sephora or ulta wherever yeah and it's basically comes in like this brush applicator thing and then you can just apply it over your makeup now the thing is the you still need to put your sunscreen on underneath mm -hmm. because it's very easy to miss uh miss spots when you use these powders or these mists mm -hmm. so i would only rely on them as like your touch-up method i wouldn't use it as the main method of sunscreen so it doesn't leave a cast or anything like that? The super group doesn't. Some of these mineral, pa like, uh, who is it? Derma E makes one that's less expensive. And I saw exactly why that mess was less expensive. <laughs> the super group one comes in three shades, translucent shades. So I use the deep and that oh. the deep is, is a good match for me. Awesome. Because it's not, it's not really depositing color, so it's not so bad. Okay, clean sunscreens. I feel like 2021, we really dug deep. It's everything being clean and vegan and cruelty-free. Right. Now, is that an option for a sunscreen? Because I know there's mineral and there's chemical sunscreens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's a little bit on that? So the thing with clean is that that can mean anything. Like what they're, like, what do people say? I want clean, but I'm like, what that mean? What do you, what do you mean? What that mean? <laughs> Because clean can mean anything. Anyone, clean is not a regulated term. So the, the government doesn't have like guidelines as to what can be considered clean. Any That's brand true. can call any, like I can call this clean water and sell this to people on the streets for, for $10 <laughs> a glass. Like come get this clean water. And you know, like I'd be well within my rights because what the hell does clean mean, right? Wow. Same Same thing with sunscreen. It's like, what does that mean? Like the, a brand will come up with their own parameters as to what they think clean is. And then that's their parameters. But another brand oh. could have something totally different. Like for instance, Supergoop uses the term clean chemical. Like when they have their, um, cause the Supergoop, right. Supergoop sells both mineral and chemical sunscreens. Um, I like to use chemical sunscreens. Like I do review a lot of mineral sunscreens because I know that it's hard to find for deeper skin tones. But I personally like chemical sunscreen. Can you break me it down a little bit, face. though? Like, what, what is, is the mineral difference? versus chemical? Yeah. yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of people will try to tell you that, like, one's better than the other. And that's not, that's not true unless um, it's, like, a personal thing. Like, some people can't use the chemical sunscreen. So for them, of course, a mineral sunscreen would be better. But the difference is a mineral sunscreen, in the U.S. at least, uses titanium dioxide and um, zinc oxide as the filters to protect you from the sun in the formulation. Now, the thing is, if you Google titanium dioxide and, and iron, um, what did I just say? Zinc titanium oxide. dioxide and zinc oxide, zinc. and zinc oxide, and you Google a picture of it, that mess is a white powder. Like, it is a white pigment pigment is like white right <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a little harder to make that not look good on deeper skin a lot of the mineral sunscreens don't even look good on white skin <laughs> oh. so what brands will do with the mineral sunscreens to try to make it um a little look a little better is they may put like certain oils or certain types of emollients in it so that it spreads better and looks better on the skin but if you have oily skin like me, it's like, well, now that's greasy and, and it's not going to work for me. Um, another way is sometimes they micronize the zinc or the titanium dioxide to make it smaller uh, so that it's less detectable. But then people got a problem with that because then they try to be like, oh, well, then because the particles are small, it's going to pass through my bloodstream. But there's no evidence. Whoa. That it's like, but there's no evidence okay. that's actually harmful. But this is how the brands kind of like, you know, make you think like, ah, everything's crazy Jeez. because it's, oh, this is going to pass through your bloodstream and it's, it's crazy. The skin, it, people think the skin is like a sponge. There's a lot that the skin filters through. Like the skin does what the skin needs to be. If it's a healthy skin, it does what it's, it needs to do. Now, a chemical sunscreen, 
um, usually has any number of filters to um, protect you from the sun. It could be avabenzone, oxabenzone, octocrylene. There, there's a number of them that we use here in the U.S. And when you go outside the U.S., you have even more like what they call new age filters. Now, the thing is, again, I like chemical sunscreens because they're easy, one, two, three, but my skin can tolerate it. Some people have um, allergies to the filters that are used in the chemical sunscreens that protect you from the sun. Uh, so sometimes people can't use those chemical sunscreens. So anytime anyone has ever told me I'm allergic to sunscreen, I can't wear it, that's, I'll be like, well, have you tried a mineral sunscreen? They'll be like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, okay. Because people don't realize that there's, you know, that difference Different thing. There. Yeah. And then, and then there's some people who maybe the zinc oxide that's used in the mineral sunscreen may not be, may be something that d isn't conducive to their skin and their lifestyle as well. So that's the, that's the main difference there between the two. One isn't better than the other. They essentially work similar-ish to, you know, despite some of the things that people have heard, they both similarly work similarly to protect you from the sun. Um, it's a personal preference kind of thing when it comes down to which one you want to choose. Interesting. Okay, so that's awesome to know because I feel like there has been such a debate on which is better. This is better because it's only mineral. Like you think it's only mm -hmm. minerals and this or that or chemicals or chemical. Like you take the word so literally, but there's right. it's some in both. Like it's everything is a chemical. So there's chemicals yeah. in a mineral sunscreen. There's chemicals in my clean water that I'm going to be selling for ten dollars <laughs> a glass. Like everything is a chemical. Like I'm. I, I, it's it's so crazy the way that things get fear mongered, you know? It's just like marketing. It's all yeah. yeah, like like you were saying, it's all in the marketing, it's all in what terminology. Like I heard, for example, for recycling on the back of a box, if you see like a triangle with the number seven in it, it just means that it's fluff. It doesn't mean that it's recyclable. It's just a marketing tactic that has been done in order to make people wow. feel that mm -hmm. it is recyclable or just to fill in that space, but it's not regulated by the government. It's nothing. Wow. So this great. has been such an awesome conversation, but let's have a little fun. I'm going to yes. ask you a couple rapid fire questions. Are you ready? All right. So my <laughs> first question was mineral or chemical sunscreen, but you already answered that. So we're going to- Yeah, I like chemical. You. Okay. Do you like sport? Basketball, yes. What would be your superpower if you had one? To fly. I don't know why I just think thought of that, but to fly, because then I could just go to wherever. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? Gray. Like your last name. Yes. And like my gym outfit. <laughs> yes. What do you like to do for fun? Eat. <laughs> <laughs> what kind like of food? I like to eat. I like to go out to eat. I don't even have a favorite kind of food. Like if, if there was anything that no matter where I was, and I'd be like, you know what, I can go for that is my mother's roti. Ooh. My mother was born in Trinidad and Tobago and roti mm. is a, a dish that comes from- A traditional dish? Yeah, it comes from, because there are a lot of different cultures in Trinidad. So it's like an Indian thing that kind of like a melting pot kind of thing. But when I tell you that is so delicious and the best roti to me in the world comes from my mother. <laughs> oh yeah. Now, okay, so is yeah. it meat in there? Like with, with You can put meat. So so basically roti is made out of like flour, uh, peas, I believe it's chickpeas. I've sat and watched them make it, but to be honest with you, I'll watch for a second and be like, all right, when is it going to be done? <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, um, I want to say there's either ghee or butter in there. Um, and then, you know, some other spices and then you, you, um, roll it up into the ball and then the ball, you put like the, the, the peas and you roll it out and it's like a, almost like a flat bread kind of thing, Yum. but really delicious. Um, and you can put, you can, I eat it on its own sometimes. Mm -hmm. You can put like curry chicken, curry goat, curry potato. If you're not, um, someone who eats meat and it's so, mm. It sounds and there's different good. types of roti, but what my what the roti that my mom makes is something that's called dal puri. Look, I'm, I'm yeah. about to be on YouTube seeing if I can go, like make this stuff. <laughs> Where is the best place you traveled? Grenada in the um, Caribbean. Next question: Who you dating? No, I'm kidding. I don't. No, you ain't got to answer that you question. Date myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, you, also this year I did say that maybe I would. Um, considered like looking to date again. I just 
must be like, man, these men suck. Like, when, when's the new season of men's? The, when's the new drop? <laughs> You know what? That's going to be after this podcast. Uh, right. If you could meet and hang out with any celebrity or any person in the world, who would that person be for you? Can they be dead? I know yep. it'd be kind of weird. Dead or alive. Dead. Mike, Michael Jackson. I love me some Michael Jackson. But if it was somebody alive, it'd probably be uh, Missy Elliott. That, that woman, she needs to get all the flowers that she deserves. I know? mean, every one of them. I feel right. like she hasn't gotten them and she deserves every last one. Like, right. she carry me through the early 2000s like mm-hmm. legit so we was the, up in the club talking about firm, 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 firm. okay her and timbaland <laughs> and Aaliyah, like that right. trio yes. nobody can understand it gen zers oh google it just listen to anything from them mm-hmm. in that genre i'm t- in, in that era it's it's unmatched but where can right. people find you so I'm on YouTube. My crazy behind now has three channels. So I have a skincare <laughs> channel, which is Style and Beauty Doctor, a fashion channel, Style with Danielle. And then I just started a personal channel, Life with Danielle. So we'll talk about yes. like dating, money, New York City life, and those sorts of things on that channel. And on Instagram and in- Oh, on Instagram. See, I'd be I'm just zooming in on YouTube. On Instagram, <laughs> I'm style and beauty doc. N with the, the letter same, N. The letter N. So okay. style, the letter N, beauty doc. And um, the, I have the same name on TikTok, but I can't log into my TikTok. I've been <laughs> the couple of days you for them to like send me, me the email. <laughs> I'm like, because because they I signed up with the account with my Instagram, but I had to change my Instagram password. And um, they no longer do Instagram login. So it was just a whole bunch of stuff. So I had to email them. Right. So I have to, I'm at TikTok's mercy to hopefully get my get back into my account. I'm about to go down the roller deck and see who knows somebody that works in TikTok. Okay. And then right? your website, the style and beauty doctor. The style and beauty doctor.com. I want to thank Danielle again for coming onto the show and just giving us those gems about sunscreen and just all the variations it's so many it's just so many levels to sunscreen she definitely made me think a little bit deeper into sunscreen and the texture and and there's powder sunscreens that you can put over your makeup it's so much information that i personally just haven't dug dug into for sunscreen so i feel like i have some homework to do to do a little bit better on my sunscreen game i'm definitely incorporating sunscreen more into my routine but after talking to her it really makes me want to experiment a little more with sunscreen and see what else is out there i hope you guys were informed I hope you guys feel like you learned something for every show. I want my guests leaving like they've learned something, like they've been informed. This podcast is a podcast of resourceful information. I hope that mission was accomplished for you today. And I thank you so much for listening. Danielle shared all the places that you can find her. So please check her out and tell her the Makeup and Beauty podcast sent you. You can find me over on every platform at C. Michelle Styles. You can check out my website, www.cmichellestyles.com. If you guys want to be informed more on more beauty and fashion related things, please sign up for my email list that is in the show notes as well. I send out emails every Tuesday on all things makeup, beauty, and fashion. So check that out and sign up so you'll be the first to know when things drop or when something new is coming out or just the happenings in the industry. And last but not least, if you stuck around to the end of this episode, please listen to others while you're here. It would mean the world to me if you could rate this podcast and leave me a review. It helps the podcast grow. Thank you so much for joining me for Beauty and Community. And until next time, adios, besos.